In this week's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how you can create this cool lampshade with two different looks, all with using alcohol ink on UPO paper. So stick around, that's coming up next. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Art with Jane Monteith. This week I'm really excited to be bringing to you a very simple, uh, very effective project that will take you um, all of uh, 10 minutes to create. And I posted a picture of a lamp and lampshade that I had created several weeks ago on Instagram and I had overwhelming response and people asking if I could please do a YouTube video on it. So that's what I'm going to be doing this week. It's very uh, simple to do and I'm going to share with you all the things that you need in order to create this week's project. So let's get started. So the items that you'll be needing this week, most of them are laid out here in front of you. And as you can see, the very first item here that you'll need is UPO paper. And we need this obviously to create our textures on, but you'll need the UPO translucent, not the regular UPO paper. And the reason is of course, just like the name indicates, it's uh, see-through. And we want that in order for our textures to illuminate when we turn on our light and then it shines through the shade onto our texture. So it's important that you get the UPO translucent, not the regular UPO paper. Um, that actually won't work in this particular project. So this is the 11 by 14 UPO paper that I'm using. And the shade that I picked up is from a store in Canada called Boucler. So uh, if you have one locally or you wanna order online, then this is where I got uh, it from. It was $16.99. And this was the perfect size because I can wrap around two pieces of my UPO translucent and there's still enough uh, room here or width that I can trim it off if need be. Well, obviously I will be trimming it off and um, yeah, just two pieces here is all you need. You can get one that has obviously a wider uh, shade, but then you'll require more pieces of UPO paper. So the smaller when you're first starting out is probably easier. So you'll need a shade. And then of course the base to this, I also picked up a Boucler. This is just a plain white base. And then of course your uh, light bulb. Now I did test this shade. I left it on for most of the day. There wasn't any worry or concern of the shade or lamp uh, heating up and the UPO um, you know, catching on fire or anything like that. Uh, so it worked for me. You might wanna test it yourself, but there was no issues as far as I was concerned for safety when I tested it myself. Okay, you have your UPO, then of course a couple of tools, uh, scissors to cut your UPO. You'll need uh, a ruler or a spatula uh, of some sort so that we can create and move the inks around on our texture. Then your inks, of course, and my standard go-to Jacquard uh, Pinata line products. I have several here that um, I'll probably use. And then to actually adhere our you pull paper onto her shade. I'm going to be using a 3M Super 77. This is a spray adhesive. I really like this one. It's one of my go-tos uh, for a lot of the spray adhesives that I use. And then if you are spraying uh, either indoors or outdoors, then you want to have uh, a box that you can spray into so that it just sort of keeps everything in one uh, little area and not going all over your counter space or surface. Now, of course, please, if you can, do this outside and you know wear the mask if uh, necessary. It's uh, airborne chemical product, so you just want to make sure that your safety is taken into consideration. And if you are inside, then obviously make sure you're working in a very, very well ventilated area. All right, I think we're ready to get started. We've got all our supplies here. Let's get uh, started with our textures. All right, let's start with our first texture. I have some colors here, some sun bright yellow, Senorita Magenta, Baja Blue. I may use a little bit of rich gold and I might use some of the cleanup solution. And of course you don't have to use this. So you can use blending solution or extender or even alcohol if you wanted to. And if you need to know more about these inks and the solutions, then I have lots of other videos on YouTube that you can check out as well. I wanted to mention and give my e-courses a plug as well. I just launched some this weekend. I'm super excited about it. I've had lots of enrollment already. And for those of you that know me uh, and my art, there's uh, a lot of information with regards to my specific steps and processes on how I create my mod minis, which are my collage built alcohol ink on wood panel finished with resin pieces. I get so many people 
asking how I make these, these are what I sell online, uh, that I decided to just offer e-courses around it. So an extensive overview, step-by-step, -step, from start to finish on how I make those, as well as lots of information uh, about alcohol inks, troubleshooting, all kinds of things. So I'll leave some information in the description box as well as a video box here, and uh, you can check that out and enroll if you uh, choose to do so. All right, let's get started with these textures. So you need, as I mentioned, a spatula. You want to be able to move the inks around on this paper. Uh, it'll be very, very quick and dry quickly. And again, any of these products that you see here, if you do want to purchase them from my shop, you can. That's also outlined in the description box. All right, let's start with uh, some ink on the page. And I'm really not going to think too much about this. It's just fun and simple just to have some different kinds of textures that you can create very quickly on your page. And of course, just make sure that you protect your surface well because you'll be dragging right over the texture. You want it to obviously go right over the edge in this case. And a little bit more blue here. It's also best to start off with two uh, colors that work well together. So obviously uh, the pink and the blue, when they run into each other, you're going to be making uh, purple and you're not going to be worried about creating a muddy mess. Sometimes when you put too many colors on the page, that's what happens, especially with alcohol inks. You really don't want that to happen. Oops, a little bit too much over the page there. All right. And maybe we'll put a little bit of gold here. I really like using the translucent. Um, sometimes even more than the regular Upo paper, it just flows across the page very, very nicely. And you get a really, really pretty finish. And you want to consider your second piece. If you want it to match up, then obviously you want to create, obviously, the second texture very similar to the first one. Uh, but my initial shade that I did, they were two uh, completely different textures, as you can see here, which sometimes is great because maybe you just are, get bored of the same decor like I do quite quickly, and you can just turn the lampshade around and stare at something different. So, uh, yeah, you can do that also. Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> Okay, I think I will just kind of leave that. I, I don't want to do too much more. I like the way that the red was going there. So just drag that across all the way. And of course you could add more, you can do whatever you like there, but uh, I, I think I'm done here. This is pretty much it. So as you can see, that took all of three minutes to do. And we just want to allow that to dry. Now there are questions uh, whether it's dry if you uh, seal it. Now, because this is a lampshade and it's more just of a fun project for me, I, uh, I didn't seal my initial one. You can, if you want to, put Kmar over it as well as UV protectant spray. Um, if you choose to do that, you can. I'm not, this isn't going to be sitting out in direct sunlight all the time uh, and it's just more of a fun project, but you can definitely add those protect protective sprays on there should you choose to do so.
just throw a bit of cleanup solution on there. It kind of changed my mind. All right, I think we're good with that one. I'm going to move that aside and move on to the second piece. All right, I've wiped off my spatula just with some alcohol just to clean it off so it's ready to go for another round. And I think this one, maybe I'll just do something a little different with some colors just so that I can show you uh, something other than what we just created. So I'm going to just use some blue and maybe some yellow in this one so we can get more of a green over overlap and a, just a different effect altogether. And you can see how the translucent stains as well. Once you have that first color down and moved around, then everything you put over top will stain the under layer. some gold. Maybe I'll throw some pink in this one just to see what happens. Lots of little dots in this one. Oh, it's pretty. All right, I like that one. As random as it is, I think that turned out actually really, really nicely. And when that illuminates, it'll look so pretty. It really will. Okay, I'm gonna leave this one to dry. I might do a few other textures, but now you get the gist. And you can create as many as you want, different colors, and then we'll just pick from the ones that turned out the best. And we can then move on to the next step of adhering this to our shade. So here are all my textures finally finished, and I did an, a few extras you can see here. The possibilities are really endless when it comes to col color combinations and moving your inks around on the page. So now it's just a matter of picking which ones I like the best and I'm going to be selecting two. I've done a couple within the same palette range, some purples and some pinks. Then I've done some oranges and reds and greens as well. So I'll just pick a few here of what I like on my shade and we'll move forward with mounting it. You can see it's going to look really, really pretty once it's on the shade. I really, really like this look. It's very, very effective. Do we want two different looks or one? If only I could hear you yelling back through the YouTube channel. Okay. So I've decided to go with these pieces. I think these will look really good once they are adhered to the lamp. And all you do essentially in this case is just start off where the seam is on your lamp shade and that's where your starting point will be for your texture when you wrap it around. Now it's important to remember that when you're purchasing a shade that you get one that's completely flat all the way around. Don't get one that has a curve to it because otherwise your piece when you're mounting it won't sit flat and flush on that shade and it will be too difficult to uh, 
to have it sit properly on there. So just make sure that you have a round shade. And all you do here, as I mentioned, you just want to spray the back side of this texture in your uh, area of where you're spraying. And again, if you can do this outside, please do this outside in a well ventilated area, be safe, you know, keep your health in check. But because I'm doing this inside for video purposes, uh, again, I'm still working in a very well ventilated space. I have a door open and, and we're good to go. So uh, Super 77 is what we're using and I'm just going to spray the entire surface of this and then we'll start placing it on our shade. and you want to cover it quite well, just leave it for, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 seconds. Leave it there just so that it starts getting tacky. And in the meantime, you can just bring your shade over and determine uh, your starting point here. As I mentioned, where the seam is, we're going to begin there. So this should be okay now. And this can be a little bit tricky. So you just want to just get your starting point off really really well here and just get it right up into the corner there and the edge where it's flush on that seam and start here you may have to reposition it a few times and I want to sort of get it underneath that lip doing okay here and we can always trim the top too when we're done but the sprayed glue is quite good and um, if you have a good coat and covering on it you uh, shouldn't have to worry about it coming loose and as I already mentioned the shade does not heat up um, I've tested it and uh, it's fine, so you don't have to worry about it coming off of the shade. Just make sure you adhere it really, really well and rub it down with your hand. Okay, we'll continue on with the next piece, but I'm going to just trim off this area first. But so far you can see how that's going to be looking and it's going to be really, really pretty. Okay, I'm gonna trim this right now. I also recommend when you're using scissors, especially when you're working with adhesive uh, type textures, uh, you want to use scissors that are the non-stick. So these are the, actually the Fisker's uh, titanium non-stick. I really, really like these. And then just carefully start cutting around and you have obviously the base of your shade as your guide and you can use that. So just take your time when you're cutting around there. So there is your first half of your lampshade. And we'll move on to the other texture, repeating the exact same process. Okay, my next piece is ready to go here. Start with this. Now I'm just going to overlap it a little bit here. This is my starting point. And again, don't worry if it goes over, we can always trim it, as I've already mentioned there. Just got a little bit of overage. And now we would just want to meet up with the seam. So we've got about, I think I'm gonna overlap it just a little bit here. Just cut down straight. There we go. 
and it's overlapped too, so we don't see the seam on the side either. So now we can trim the side and we should be good to go. So now the edges around here, I will trim, make sure it's nice and neat and everything is aligned properly. Okay, there you have it. I have trimmed off the sides and you can see the seam is uh, joined nicely there at both sides. We're good to go. And we can now place this on our lamp base. Well, there you have it, guys. Here is the finished product, both sides of the lampshade. That's it for this week's video. If you enjoyed it and found value, please give it a thumbs up, like, and share. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for weekly art videos. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys again real soon.